Hi, it's William. Welcome to Flyspoke. And um, in the vise, I have a version of Pete Dubay's Silver Rider. Um, and uh, what we discovered, I'm working on an order, a bunch of flies for a friend of mine who owns a camp up on the Miramichi. And what we discovered last fall was this fly that is really, really uh, uh, a good fly for Restigush, Matapedia during the springtime, even in this big size on tubes, um, was also really, really effective during the fall in October on the Miramichi. And here's a uh, here's a couple others here. This is the here's a more traditional style a hook style, um, same type of fly using a single hook. Um, I do them in doubles. So you can you can choose all sorts of different uh, different ways to tie the fly, but it it is really effective any place where a white and black, which are the two colors that salmon can see in a total absence of light, is white and black. So this is a particular version. It has uh, a whole lot of um, flash uh, uh, in it. It has uh, rubber legs in it for some sound. And I'm just finishing this one off here with a, another coat of head cement. And I'll move it out of the way. And I'm going to show you how to tie this fly. Okay. So I'll just put that in a toothpick. You can, you, I use toothpicks just to stand them up in and stick them in the... Uh, Styrofoam. Okay, so for this fly, I'm going to be uh, I'm using a real simple vice situation. This is uh, an HMH attachment that I'm just putting into this regal vice, just to hold it in there like that, and that holds a mandrel for me. And then I'm taking an HMH. It's just a half inch tube, aluminum, very light aluminum, and uh, um, some of the hybrid uh, junction tubing. Now the hybrid junction tubing is a lot thinner. It has the same inside diameter, but the outside diameter is, is a lot thinner. And basically I just put that on and wedge it on to this tapered mandrel, and that really holds in place well. Uh, I'm using uh, 14 aught shear. It's 72 denier. The uh, Gordon Griffith shear thread is absolutely spectacular. And I'm just starting right there on the junction tube where it meets um, where it meets the uh, the regular aluminum tube. And I'll take a, I'm going to take a strand of black floss, about a foot long, double it up, double it again, and I'll cut that. Now the floss can be pretty unruly because it comes off a, it comes off a, uh, a round spool. So the um, good thing to do is to hang floss so that it completely straightens out before you use it. And this what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a brush and I brush the floss. It's going to put all the fibers together for me, flare them out a little bit, give them some nice silky texture. Instead of a bunch of individual strands of floss, what I end up with is a nice grouping of floss together to use as a tail. And I'll make the tail a little bit on the long side. And just tie that right to that spot. Now I'll go to my tail with my scissors. I'm going to give it an upward shape, just like that. Alright, now that's pretty secure in there. I'm not going to worry about it pulling out. 
The reason is that once I get this next step, I'm taking a two strips ostrich hurl in black, and I'm just going to tie that in by the butt section of the ostrich hurl right over that same spot. And then I'm going to take some cement, some, some lacquer finish, and I'm going to put some lacquer right on all the way around that spot where this hurl is going to be. And then I'm going to wind the hurl right onto the cement. And still I'm up on top of the junction tube. Now I can wind down and off the junction tube. And that cement is going to help keep that tag right up on there. I'll advance my thread um, and I'm going to take some holographic silver mylar. Simply lay that in at the front. And wind back. Now the holographic silver mylar is not the strongest stuff in the world. So once I get back to the front, tie it off, trim, I'm going to go back to my, head, my cement. This is just clear nail polish that I'm using. And I'll just give the body a painting. Give it strength and we'll let that dry. Okay, so that's dry. And um, what I've done is is I've taken some white fin raccoon and I've melded into, folded into the white fin raccoon some pearl color and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to push in on the pearl color angel hair and meld that in okay so I have that really nice pearl shine there and this is this is going to be uh, this is going to be the throat of the fly and I turn it upside down I've, I've brushed out the fin raccoon to make it nice and fluffy and I'm simply going to measure how long I want it to be. We're going to trim that. We're going to trim off the uh, angel hair after we get this in place. And I'll cut it so that I can simply put it right onto the tube. Now, once I've got some wraps on it, all right. I'm just going to go in with my finger and I'm going to push and I'm going to spread it out making sure it's directly on the bottom of the hook. Give myself a nice little wide profile. You can see that's pushed out a little bit wide. And I will then just go to the front of the tube, wrap towards the back, and just make sure that's completely solidly down. Now I'll just take my fingers, run to into the end of the, and then I can just, I don't want to make paint brushes, I want to cut in various places so that that angel hair is, is in there. It's certainly going to give off some sparkle. And remember that underneath section is really most likely what the fish is going to be looking at. It's actually that underneath a fly, not the front or from the top. Okay, so there's the throat placed in. I'll just neaten up my wraps. And then the next thing I'm going to take, um, this happens to be some really nice, long and fluffy Arctic fox. 
And um, for this, you can use Fin Raccoon, you can use Arctic Fox, of course, you can use uh, um, what's being called Temple Dog, although importing Temple Dog into the United States is highly illegal. So when you see what's being called uh, Temple Dog and it has uh, the guard hairs are all different colors and things like it's actually Fin Raccoon and um, it's not really Temple Dog. So I'm going to just measure a base wing and trim out a piece and then I take my brush and if you here I'll, I'll show you the difference here's the here it is before I brush it right it's, I don't know if you, it's really can be seen by the camera but after I brush it it really changes how silky how silky it feels okay this is going to be a base wing I'm going to get right on the top and what I want to do is I'm going to look at the base wing and I want to lengthen the top hairs and shorten the bottom one. So I put my fingers top and bottom and I just push like this. Right? So I've shortened the bottom hairs and I've lengthened the top hairs. And, uh, just look at again how long I want this to be. Nice length to the fly. And I'm going to put my fingers right where I want to cut. And I'm going to trim that off blunt. Make sure I get everything. Okay. And I'm going to go right on top. Draw down, put a couple wraps. Oh, it moved. Try that again. Sometimes it helps just a, a little bit of moisture on the front. I'll trim it again blunt. down. Alright, now, again, that's sitting right on top, but I want to spread out that the bulbousness side to side. So I push down. That's the advantage of using a tube here over just a hook shank, is the tube is wider. And these are micro tubes, so these are not very wide. But that's one of the advantages of tying these flies on tubes, is you can control the width. Alright. And I'm just kind of neatening up just a little bit. Alright. Now, I'm going to take some crystal flash, basically silver crystal flash. And this has a uh, pretty coarse crinkly look to it. I'm going to take two strands, lay it on the top, just off to the side ever so slightly, put a wrap over the top, bend it back, Moving it to the opposite side. You always want to try to put this in whenever you can on these materials by bending them back. And again, I'm going to cut so that that's laying in there. And I'm going to take one strand of blue crinkle flash. Just one strand, and on one side, I'm going to lay the crink, lay it over the top, catch it right there, and lay 
a second piece on that side. Notice I continued it again, right? It's the same piece side to side. Just makes for a little stronger. And that I want to be slightly longer than the silver. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to go back to the Arctic Fox in black again. And I'm going to take a little bit greater quantity this time. Trim that out. Get the brush. Again, I want the bottom. I'm choosing the curve there. You see the curve of it? So I want that to go on like that with the curve. So I'm going to again push the top, hold the bottom in, push it so that the top is slightly longer. I'm going to lay that as a dome up over everything. Measure, trim. I'm going to lay that right up on top again. Okay, now I'm going to push this. All right, you see all the crinkle in there? I'm going to push this right down and over the crink. So this is now circling around the flash. And the flash is looks like it's coming from inside. It also gives it a more of a bulbous look to it. Okay, so what you can see is that the top is rather bulbous, which is what you're looking for. You want this thing to displace water. Alright, move forward, holding in. Now just trim a little bit of the, that material. I know it's caught in well. Heads tend to get a little bit larger, of course, when you're using tubes. All right. Next, I am going to take some uh, rubber leg material. And this happens to be white with little flecks of holographic in it. take one for this side. Now this rubber leg material actually makes noise. Really displaces a lot of water as it flaps around. And trim that back. You want these to be a little bit on the short side. You don't want them to be as long as the whole fly. You just want them sticking out slightly to the side and 
Alright, and then we'll take a second one. We'll do the same thing on this side. Let them crisscross a little bit, trim them on the shorter side. They're not positioned well. Let's put it right up there. How's that? Yep, that's good. Just let them flop. Alright, and the very last touch to this fly is some moderately sized jungle cock nails. They're going to go right with the, with the black wing. side and bend them back Snap these off. A little head cement. put three or four coats on this by the time it's done with the head cement so it's pretty much the fly that's the uh, that's a silver rider micro tube There it is.